Divine Truth Interviews. Jesus, Mary and others are interviewed by members of the media and the public. Mary interviews Jesus on the subject of Jesus and Mary's dealings. Recorded on the 22nd of September 2015 in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. This is session two, part two. What people do we refuse to answer? <laughs> well, there's probably a long list there, isn't yeah, there? Yeah. If we go through them one by one, if we start with the issue of love, yeah. if a person, we can feel a person is, has an unwillingness to love, they have no desire to grow in love, mm -hmm. no desire to, particularly with love of God, mm -hmm. then of course, we're not probably going to answer them. And the only time we might answer them is mm -hmm. if we feel there was some public setting or some kind of public thing that we could, uh, where um, we could teach a whole group of people about love through the interaction. Lesson. Yeah, yep. yeah, I've got to. So keeping in mind that all spiritual development is development in love, yes. if a person is refusing to love and they have no interest in love, then there's no point well, our, our, for us. I no mean. point for us. Yeah, yeah. They might have a point with other people interacting yeah. with them, yeah. but the reality is that our focus and desire is all about love. Yeah. And if, if a person doesn't want to love and doesn't want to learn about love, then from our perspective, it, it's not something we want to spend a lot of time on. Our big focus is assisting people who want, want to, love. to love. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, they don't fit into that focus. Yeah. So that's uh, number one. Yeah. Number two would be um, the same goes with truth. So if a person has no desire for universal truth mm -hmm. or no desire for personal truth um, and they have little desire to grow in universal truth or grow in personal truth or they already think they know the truth mm -hmm. uh, about things and they're very argumentative about that, then it's highly unlikely we're going to respond to them at all. Yeah. So. You know, you can see that people like Christians who write us a whole heap of things about the Bible, uh, quoting a whole heap of scripture and basically lecturing us and not asking any questions, it's highly unlikely they're going to receive a response because we can feel from them that they don't want truth. Yeah. They don't want to know the problems with their belief system. And they're not searching for truth. And it's only the people who are seeking for truth that will find it. Mm -hmm. So, or even have the capacity to hear it. Yeah. Or, so, you know, we're not going to respond to those yeah. people. Yeah, so there's the issue of universal or God's truth. Mm -hmm. And then there's the issue of personal truth, isn't there? Correct. If we feel that a person, if we can feel that a person is close to yes. receiving personal truth about themselves and they don't even want to work through the issues that block them from receiving personal truth, yeah. then given that a requirement of humility or an aspect of humility which opens us to being loving and receiving God's truth yeah. is this this openness to receiving personal truth. Correct. So you could say that's two and three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In one, two, yeah. universal truth, not open to receiving yeah. it. Three, not open to receiving personal truth. Yeah. Probably not going to respond to you. Yeah. And the only time again that we would if we feel we're in a setting where a, a, la a larger majority of people could benefit from the interaction. Yeah. Um, what are we up to? Four? Four. Four is probably about humility. It is. So, you know, is the person humble? Mm -hmm. Do they have a desire to feel their emotions? Yeah. Do they really want to feel themselves? Do they really want to work their way through their emotional injuries? Or are they just talking about it? Mm -hmm. Or are they faking it or in a facade? Or are they in their addiction? Or if, they just, if they're just making out their emotional when they're not really dealing with any real core emotions, and then again, we don't feel that they match that requirement of being humble. Yeah. They're, not, yeah. they're not living a life of humility. And it's really hard to help people who are not humble. Because yeah. to, to receive help you, and receive knowledge, you've got to be a humble person because quite frequently that knowledge will be completely different than what you expect yes. and completely different than what you believe. And what you're invested in hearing and all Correct. of those things. Yeah. And of course, there's people out there who aren't yet feeling like fully free to feel all of their emotions all of the time, but they they have some desire within them to remove their arrogance or their self-importance or to remove those issues that prevent them living humbly all the time. And so they will get a response. They will get a response. <laughs> but the people who have no none of those, they're not humble and they have no desire to change that, then they're not going to hear from us. No. And unless, again, unless it is in a situation where a large majority of people can benefit from the interaction. 
So, you know, I might write an email response outlining all of their problems yeah. and put it on the net yeah. so that people could see yes. um, all of the different problems with what they've su suggested or said yeah. in regard to humility, love, truth and so forth, mm -hmm. just from a teaching perspective. Yeah. But I won't do it to punish them and I won't no. do it to expose them. I'm just doing it because I feel like, oh, there's a lot of learning lessons that we can gather here. Yeah. But that's the only time they would get a response. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. I suppose the next um, sort of category of uh, people who contact us are people who are attacking, who are abusive, who are mm. belittling, who are violent in their words or actions. Mm. Um, it's sad, really, that people yeah. think they can do that. Um, yeah. It is a demonstration of their arrogant condition that they feel that they can email someone they don't even know and abuse them for no reason other than that they their opinion disagrees with their own yeah do you know what i mean yeah and that um, they feel so righteous in those kind of yeah, yeah we get a lot of christians who are in that or religious people generally who are in that zone yeah and um, and non-religious people who feel very yeah. angry about uh cults Jesus or whatever or, or, or cults or <laughs> god or, yeah, yeah and they know, feel we're exploiting people or yeah or you sometimes yeah there's all sorts of people it's, it's so interesting many. that we get yeah. abuse from a wide range of people <laughs> not, we don't just uh, not, get it from one group we just group. don't stir up one group it's <laughs> uh, every group <laughs> and you know people like that uh don't have, have no desire to love yeah a person who loves would never choose to abusively attack another person for any reason whatsoever yeah. any reason yeah. whether they believe that person is an abuser themselves or not mm -hmm. like i don't go around abusively attacking all the abusers in the world and and a person who loves would never do so no. you know that's not the way to get a response out of those people and it's not the way to actually bring about loving change no. or to bring out the best in people or to, yes. yeah. and people who do that are very coarse yeah. uh, in the sense that they obviously have a lot of emotional injuries that they're yet to address and they want to blame the world or other people mm. in the world for what is coming out of them and also they're not open to truth they're not open to love they're not humble and so they don't meet the first three or four of our requirements <laughs> in the list in yeah. this list and so at the end of the day we feel not attracted at all to answering their questions yeah. and in fact if we receive a continuous stream of abuse from them at the end of the day, we'd probably just, just block their email up. account and block all access that they would have to us in any way. Yeah, and I suppose that in that category, we do attract at times people who are almost what I would call stalkers, yeah. who they may not be overtly attacking and, abu uh, well, but they're, no, abusive they're abusive in the way in which they use our time. Yes, and we've demand asked them to not attention. do it and their demand for personal engagement and their lack of regard for our request that they stop contacting us. Correct. Um, and that they respect our time, that our time... And they respect our will, that yeah. we don't want to engage with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. They, and there's a lot of people around who don't respect other people's will. They just yeah. keep badgering and pestering and yeah. abusing the person in the hope that eventually the person will respond. Yeah. Will we respond less when you do that? Yes. And, and, and the more you do it, the less we will respond until the end we won't respond to at all mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> and and i mean at all you yeah. won't get you won't we won't answer our phone if it's you yeah. we won't we won't you know you won't get any responses emails we'll block all of your emails and you know that's because because those kind of people are have proven to us there's no desire to love mm -hmm. there's no desire for truth they're not humble yeah. they have no they all all they want to do is harm somebody else yeah well if that's what you want to do sorry go and do it i'm sorry that you have to do it it's yeah. a pretty sad statement of your own condition if you want to do that yeah. but it's certainly not something we're yeah. going to enable mm. yeah and sadly we have people who write to us using one email account and we say please stop contacting us they continue to do it so we block that email account yes they create a new email account yes which is a demonstration do... of how unloving they are yes that they do not want to respect so they try to circumvent the rule yeah and, and this is what they try to do also with God's laws. They're always trying to manoeuvre around God's and God's laws and trying to manoeuvre themselves around that law and this law. And, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what they're like with God. That's what, if they're like that with God, they're going to be like that with me and vice yeah. versa. Yeah. And at the end of the day, if, if you like it with anybody, you like that with God. And well, I just feel like, right. well, if you're basically proving that you're a lawless individual who basically just wants what they want. And, and, and I'm not interested. And feels very entitled. 
entitled to. Well, yeah, it's yeah. entitlement, demand, yeah. anger, rage, all sorts yeah. of emotions that drive it. But at the end of the day, it's not a sincere emotion of progressing that yeah. drives it. And so we really don't want to have much to do with you. Yeah. <laughs> as a result. Yes. <laughs> develop some sincerity. If you, want yes. to, if you want to have some interactions with us, develop some sincerity. Yeah. Be honest. We're, we're happy to have ang- interactions with people who are even angry, but they're honest. And who even can see their own la- their anger is their own lack of loving con- concern or consideration for others. Yeah. That's a much more honest person. Yes, mm. and yeah, I often feel that if only people could feel our feelings towards someone who approaches us in sincerity, um, as opposed to people who approach us with demand and abuse. Like mm. we just have a policy: we cannot give you attention for our own good, for your good, for everyone's good in this situation, we cannot yeah. go there. Whereas some people who write to us who perhaps they're struggling with humility or personal truth, but there's a real sincerity, then our heart is very... Yeah, just like, like God loves those kind of people yeah. and, and we do too. Yeah. God, God really enjoys interacting with people, whether they're angry or not, whether yeah. by based on their sincerity. Yeah. And, and, you know, while I feel if a person is just swearing because that's what they sincerely feel, <laughs> well, I go, well, if you sincerely feel that, if you had true sincerity, you would recognise that, that that's out of not a loving thing to feel. Yeah. So there's obviously a problem of some kind. Yeah. It'll be great if you recognise that, because if you don't recognise that, then we're probably not going to have much to do with you either. Yeah. And by the way, God doesn't either. Yeah. Like, God's love cannot flow to a person who's in rejection of love or rejection of truth or rejection of being humble. Yeah. It, it just can't. Yeah. So why do you expect us to mm-hmm. care about, about it yeah. when God yeah. herself doesn't, yeah. does not respond to such things? Yeah. And, and God cares about the individual just like we do. Like we care that people are in that state. It's mm-hmm. sad that they're in that state. They have to have got in, in that state through not only a lot of actions other people have taken towards them, but also through a lot of decisions of their own. Yeah. And it's sad that they've made those choices and decisions, but at the end of the day, we can't change them. All we can do is prevent ourselves from having our time um, used up by them. Yeah. In the end, we don't, we're not angry with them or upset no. with them, but we don't want our time used up by them. That's right. That's right. It's just, mm. Like I said, it's a simple decision. Mm. We just can't go there. Mm. Um, all right. So, yeah, so the, that's the abusers that's and the, the attackers. and the, the People who act in violent ways and they've got no sincere desire to change. And by the way, that is if they, we notice that they're nice and kind to us, but if they're violent to other people we know or have observed them being violent to other people we know and like being so, yeah. then we go, hang on a sec, if you're being kind to us and not nice to other people, then actually you haven't learnt the lesson here. Yeah. You're only nice to people you respect. And, and you're not nice to everybody. And a person who, you know, wants to know about love wants to be loving to everybody, not just to people they respect. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Mm. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about six, uh, the sixth category, if you like, which we've yeah. already kind of touched on, yep. which is this is people who are controlling and manipulative and they've got zero desire to surrender to God's laws. Yeah, but... honestly, I have very little time for these kind of people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Main reason why is because I feel even when they ask a question, it's all manipulation. It's Mm -hmm. all just manipulation of issues and facts. And also they are asking question when they really want to make a statement many times. You know, that kind of... And that's very deceptive. It's very dishonest, you know, dishonest. These kind of people haven't even learnt to be honest about what they truly feel. At least the attacker (laughs) is honest (laughs) about what he feels and is willing to verbally abuse you with it. The person who's manipulative, deceitful, hasn't even yet learnt to be honest about what yes. they truly feel. Yes. And 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 so I feel they're even in a lot of ways were they, they will they will encourage me less to respond to them than the attacker would. Yes. I would rather respond to an attacker than a person who's deceitful, manipulative, and controlling. Uh, yeah, I would <laughs> share that sentiment. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they're not going to get much from us, no. <laughs> except again, if there's some kind of learning experience. So there's some people that fit into this category, which we've, we've talked to, yeah. like, you know, it comes to mind people over, a guy yeah. overseas, um, who we've talked to many times about his deceitful, dishonest facade yeah. and the way he manipulates and controls other people. He's often involved in other people's so-called divine truth stuff. Yes. And we can't have anything to do with him because he is deceitful and dishonest. 
and he, and, he, and he eventually verbally attacks us through anything we say. Mm -hmm. and, and we just feel like, well, yeah, you haven't learnt the basics of love yeah. yet, mate. You know, like yeah. you haven't even learnt that you're not even being honest, yeah. let alone, you know, yeah. this. And what he expresses to us isn't his real, like, his, well, it's his real feelings, but he doesn't express it to other people. And he's the kind of person who involves everybody in his arguments with us as well. Yeah. A person like that, it's just... You know, they have very little desire for truth, personal truth, no humility, yep. not much point in responding. No, no. Mm. All right. Well, it, probably in a similar vein, the seventh group are people who are condescending, belittling, ridiculing of ourselves or others, mm. and that <coughs> they can't even see that they're being like that and they just don't even want to change it. No. There's a lot of people who have a really strong emotional injury that they believe themselves to be superior to others. And that superiority comes across in every word and deed they engage. And yet they have no personal awareness or knowledge of their own condition. Mm. And, uh, and those kind of people are definitely not truth seekers or love seekers. Mm. Um, they often are in a facade. They want to give the impression they're seeking truth and the impression that they're loving yeah. when they're not. Yeah. And we find them very obnoxious, actually, yeah. and have very little feelings of attraction towards them. Yeah. And uh, again, only will engage them if there's a learning lesson for a group of other people. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next, people who are selfish, so self-absorbed, vain, who want <laughs> glory and attention, yeah. who who don't want to, you know, change that to remove that sort of arrogant, self-important viewpoint of themselves. Mm. These people I have a bit more compassion for yeah. um, because they, you know, the world today is creating self-absorbed children, you know, who Definitely. only see themselves. It's a huge injury. Yeah. And they only see, they see themselves as the centre of God's universe. Yeah. And almost they see themselves as the God of the universe. Yeah. Um, in terms of their actions and the way they mm. treat other people. Mm -hmm. And it is a sad injury, but we feel less, we don't feel as neg uh, you know, negatively inclined to respond to them as yeah. others because of the, you know, there is a, it, particularly if they have some sincerity about the injury being present. Yeah. But if they have no sincerity about the injury, it is very, very difficult to interact with them because they always believe that what you say to them isn't worth valuing as much as their own opinion. Yeah. And so it's very hard for them to receive any truth. Yeah. Um, they always believe they know better than you do. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much your life demonstrates the oppositeness of the conditions yeah. and their life demonstrates their poorer condition, they still want to believe that they are superior. And it's just sad. Yeah. Um, it, and we find it very hard interacting with them, obviously. Yeah. And, and these are people who often email us and say, look, I've watched this and I've watched that and you've said this and all of that, but look, I'm different. It doesn't apply to me what applies to other people. I'm a special case. And <laughs> God doesn't really have a special case. No. The laws operate in the same way. God has no special children either. No. We're all special. Yeah. <laughs> like there's no one person who's more special than anyone else. Yeah. And they often, you know, these people often believe they are more special than everyone else. Yeah. And they're often addicted to that. A concept. That concept. And while everyone's had a unique life experience, um, this injury of, no, I'm more special or I deserve more attention because I've got this one special case yeah, it's, is... It's, it's ludicrous. Yeah. And, yeah. and that it allows or justifies your own condescension and, and feelings of superiority towards others and, and condescension towards others. And demands upon others. And, yeah, and yeah. demands upon others. No, it doesn't justify any of those things. I'm sorry. Mm. And certainly if you start exercising your demands with myself or Mary, you will soon find out that we will not respond to them. <laughs> <laughs> we have no desire to respond to demanding people. And even if the demand is emotional, what we yes. find is a lot of people around us are emotionally demanding. You know, they might desire glory or they might desire attention or they want you to think that they're really nice when, when the feelings coming from them aren't. And, you know, there's a whole heap of people who don't voice their true feelings, but they do express their true feelings quite openly. Mm -hmm. 
And those kind of people, we find it very difficult even to share our time with yeah. as well. It doesn't matter whether they're our family or, you know, prior friends or, or people who we meet in seminars or whatever. It doesn't, it's immaterial to us. So whether they're my son, my father, my mother, my sister, my brother, or anybody else, they are all my brothers and sisters yeah. uh, from God's perspective. And as such, any one of my father's children, who, mm -hmm. of which I am one, who expresses condescension and superiority over others, oh, I feel that they, they do, definitely don't have a sincere humility yeah. and therefore it's going to be very, very difficult to have a true relationship with them of any kind. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you mentioned about often people not expressing it overtly, but sometimes the actions that the person has taken very are, overt. are screaming this injury Correct. and yet they... So there's plenty of people who engage us only and then they, when they don't get the response they want they ignore us or they engage us and then we, they don't get the response they want so they engage the person who's sitting next to us and the person who's sitting until they get the response they want yeah. these kind of people have no concept of their own injury which is a desire for attention and glory and and like what's another word for glory that's another word that's probably a better word i'm just trying to think of it but I can't, sort of, it doesn't come to mind now, but, um, yeah, which Caleb has, um, um, sort of a, a desire to be the centre of yes. everyone's attention. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a deep emotional injury caused usually in childhood. Yeah. But, but unfortunately, it keeps coming up yeah. in, the, um, in the person. And, and honestly, Oftentimes those people do not understand how narcissistic they're being. Yeah. They, they very rarely do anything for anyone else. Yeah. They are constantly involved in satisfying their own life. And their addictions. And they blame other people. When you don't feed their addiction, they call you narcissistic or, yeah. you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. But, but the reality is, like, it's the actions of a person demonstrate their true condition. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And... A person who basically changes the subject whenever the subject is anything other than themselves <laughs> has got, and they change it back to being about, <laughs> about themselves. themselves. That's a narcissistic person. Yes. Like we don't do that. <laughs> no. But plenty of other people do. Yes. That we yeah. that we know, and exactly. and we we don't feel that attracted to them. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, another one that we've touched on is people who are in addictions. Yep. generally yep. they're demanding they want their addictions met um, and they just don't have any desire really to challenge those addictions or remove those addictions from themselves yeah i feel we had a good illustration of that at the assistance group when i think it was joy and i think i forget which nina? group it was joy and nina was it? were sitting down and listening to me talk to them about their emotional injuries with men and they were attentive mm -hmm. and when i say attentive i use the term very loosely because they weren't really attentive they just wanted an attention from a man and they were getting it from me, yes. which is the only thing they wanted. Yes. So they weren't actually hearing anything I was saying to them. Yeah. And then you came and sat on my lap and immediately you could feel the antagonism in them mm -hmm. rise. And now they're very confronted and just zoned out completely because they weren't getting any attention from me because my attention was yeah. at you, I'm you. And I was instead yeah. giving them feedback in a similar vein. You were saying almost the same thing yep. I was saying but they couldn't hear it at all no. because it was coming from a woman. Yeah. So that they weren't hearing it from me either. No. Right? They were just getting an addiction met. Now, when we notice that occurring, we're not very attracted to spending more time with those people because those particular people are only there to get the emotional addiction met. That's the only reason why they're there. And this is one reason why we stopped doing some seminars a year or two ago in Australia because we could feel that many were coming just to fee feed off the attention I was giving them. Yeah. The and you have a lovely, beautiful love for everyone. Uh, when you're giving a seminar, you're passionate about truth, you love everyone there, and people feel their faith is up, they yeah. feel this beautiful man is giving me attention, and very often and then they walk, they out, walk the door out the door and can't and remember, can't remember a thing. Said. Yeah. yeah. And don't apply any of it in their life. Yeah. And I, and I sort of feel like, well, you know, that's me. If I'm not careful here, all I'm doing is feeding an addiction. Yeah, <coughs> yeah, yeah. Don't want to do that. No. <laughs> you just have a yeah, sure. cough. 
So next group of people are people who are very spirit influenced, often at times even overcloaked, mm -hmm. uh, that, and that they quite like that influence and they don't really want to do anything about it. They don't really want, want to, change. to change. Yeah. These kind of people are difficult because, um, you know, like I had one lady like this who bombarded me with 300 emails, which she actually counted. She actually said email number two, email number three, email number four, email number five, email number six. And it was all this sickening stuff about her sexual projections at me all the time. And it just went on and on and on. And no matter how much I told her I didn't want to do it, no matter how much I ignored her, mm -hmm. just keeps doing it. Email seven, email eight, gets up to email 200, email 300, you know, and, and, and honestly, that kind of a person is so spirit influenced, it is impossible to say anything to them without feeding either one of their addictions or mm -hmm. the one of the spirits or the addictions of one of the spirits with them. Yeah. Impossible to share any truth with them, impossible to share anything about love with them. There's no point in any response whatsoever, mm -hmm. aside from blocking their email yep. whenever it occurs. And Spirit influenced people, there are a lot of spirit influenced people on the planet, obviously. And it's funny how many of them are attracted to, you know, sending us a whole group of email, which usually range from initially being quite nice with us. Yeah. And then when we ignore them, being very, very nasty and often very verbally abusive yeah. uh, near the end. And, and, and we knew they would go down that track eventually because basically they're spirit influence and, and they just want an addiction met. They want this addiction with the spirit, their addiction to feel, their addiction to feel noticed and all these other things is the reason why they're overcloaked by the spirit in the first place. And the, the spirit and them, mm -hmm. it, it's difficult to interact with them because who do you interact with? Yep. Do you interact with the spirit who's overcloaking them yep. and talk to them about a whole heap of things? Yep. And then the person thinks you're talking to them yeah. or do you interact with the person and the spirit is ignoring what's being said to them and, yeah. and it's just it's like unless a person wants to clear away the spirit influence that surrounds them yeah. it's almost impossible to give them any truth yes almost impossible and really the most um oh, i want to say almost insidious and pervasive uh, how can I say that a bit more simply? The most damaging spirit influence I see that people really struggle to move through, I mean, is this kind of spirit influence that builds people up in, it's a bunch of spirits saying, you're awesome, you're great, you're completely righteous, you're yeah. completely wonderful. And tell you, them that they're God and they're having a relationship with God and everything yep. and isn't it wonderful and yep. everything's wonderful. And, and if, you know, they really need to go and basically oppress another bunch of people and that's the right thing to do and these kind of people really struggle that's as opposed to people who are getting spirit attacked and told they're terrible by spirits and things like that yeah well often a person who's being spirit attacked is actually doing the right thing mm -hmm. whereas a person who's being spirit influenced and thinks everything's wonderful yeah. is doing the wrong thing often most of the time because loving <laughs> spirits wouldn't uh influence a person correct um, to to engage in that addictive behavior yes yes mm. And so loving spirits want everyone to have their own life and not not overly influence someone. Mm -hmm. So it's only negative spirits who are really influencing people in a heavy way on the planet. Yeah. And they are going to oppose people who want to love and encourage people who want to... Engage their addiction. Yeah. yeah. Whatever that addiction yeah. be. Yeah. And most of these people have terrible moral addictions yes. so that cause a lot of... Yeah physical damage to their body, including yeah. drugs, alcohol, yeah. drink, you know, drink, um, uh, smoking, yeah. uh, the addictions of feeding off of people's energy, which is very common, yeah. particularly sexual energy, yeah. you know, where they're very sexualized and all those kind of things. All of those things are all common part of the addictions they have with these spirits. Yeah. And it is very hard to help a person who has not come to the conclusion that they're being influenced. Yes. And, and then, who likes the influence. Good, that's the thing. They're less likely to come to that conclusion if they're enjoying the yeah. influence. That's why I said it's so insidious and yeah. so pervasive because it happens all the time and people have absolutely, if they don't want to grow in love themselves or grow have a relationship with God, they have no motivation whatsoever to see that it's happening. No. And so it's very, very difficult to engage with someone like that yes. meaningfully. Yes. Yeah. So we, we often got bombarded, literally bombarded with spirit influenced people. 
from all sorts of walks of life. Interestingly, you know, yeah. I find it very interesting that many Christians who bombard us are very heavily spirit influenced yeah. and they personally don't, would be shocked yes. that they are. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. And yet they, they think it's God telling them that I've, I've got to hammer this person mm -hmm. and send him email after email after email after email after email, you know, basically, you know, just basically inundating us with information which we know about already and don't agree with yeah. <laughs> and have told them already, you know, and yet, and yet the spirit with them feels that they've got to do that. And so they impel the person on earth to yeah. do it because they have such control over that person on earth. And, and yet, you know, it's, and it's quite sad, yeah. but, but there's little we can do about it. Yeah. Uh, we can't, unless the person themselves wants to remove themselves from the influence they are under, yeah. there is nothing in fact that anybody on earth or in the spirit world will do about it. Yeah. And God himself will not do anything about it no. unless there is a pure desire for the person to remove themselves from that influence. Because it's an expression of their will. Yeah. They're, they're willfully engaged. They want that engagement. Yeah. There's little yeah. we can do to assist them. Yeah. And they just waste huge amounts of time if you begin engaging them. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. Okay. So I think that finishes the list, does it? Or No. No, there's still more. <laughs> <laughs> we got three more uh, kind of groupings. Okay, yeah. yeah. We've touched on this next one before. Yeah. And that's people who are addicted to their facade. Yes. And who just present to us their facade. It's very hard with them, isn't it? Yes. Because no matter what you say to them, they're always in their facade. It's like <laughs> you can't break through it. It's like <laughs> it's like this Egg, this this hardened it's no it's not an eggshell where you just go crack no it's it's this hardened like concrete <laughs> that you've got to get a jackhammer out and go do, 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 and, even then. <laughs> and even then it's you, know, you can't get through to them yeah i found uh, that um quite challenging at our second assistance group yes in, a lot of women there in facade and it, and there was no way that i felt that i could i just felt like i was not um, interacting with the real emotions no. I could feel coming from the people. You're not. And in the end, I completely lost my voice. Yes. Because I just... What's the point of talking? I felt <laughs> that was the feeling I was resisting, the grief yes. I was resisting. The grief. And what's the point of talking to a group of people who, who basically, who want to keep presenting to you their facade and who actually sincerely believe that their facade is the real thing. Yeah. And yet you can feel this whole barrage of emotional... <laughs> yeah hurt and injury yes. and rage and abuse yeah. and all sorts yes. of stuff coming yeah. from them and yet they're there going smiling going oh thanks yeah <laughs> and it is just completely false well and there's nothing you can do no. and one of the things i find saddest about that is that often people sometimes people present a facade and it's over the top of quite a lot of really rageful yucky emotions yeah. but sometimes it's over the top of emotions that i have deep compassion for like yes. shame and a feeling of fear and even just some addictions that they're that they're a bit ashamed of or that they're judging yeah i feel and, there's there's different classes yeah. of people in this in this group yes certainly there's some who are more sincere than others yes uh, but even even those people who have the sort of more shameful fearful things they're trying to cover up if they continually present a facade what there's just nothing that i can do to reach them yeah. yeah and i feel like saying here like we want to have a relationship with the real you yes not somebody who's not the real you yeah and and honestly if we can't have a relationship with the real you, what's the point? Because what you're presenting to us is not really you. <laughs> it's like a figment of your imagination. It's surreal. It's it, not it's, in reality. It is surreal. And yeah. it feels surreal even interacting with them. Yeah. It feels like, am I in some la-la land of some <laughs> yeah. kind? That's what the, yeah. I suppose the media said that I am. But, <laughs> and that's what it feels like. So go, well, but what I feel quite strongly is that the person themselves is in a is in la-la land. Yes. They, they are completely unaware of yeah. the emotions that are coming out of them yeah. and the difference between the emotions that are coming out of them and the physical condition, the emotional condition, condition. Um, that they're portraying. Yes. And, and I just feel like, wow, if you can't break through that layer, then it's very, very hard. And to be honest, it's very hard for us to interact with you if you can't break yeah. through that layer. And the very sad thing is, you mentioned it about being concrete. Sometimes to me, it literally feels like a bubble that the person has put up around them that is sort of um, stretchy. So, <laughs> you know, you try to, you can't touch that person with 
you love even for no. them because they're, they're blocking it. And so yeah. it, it's sort of separating them from any loving regard that I and have. And they also them. have a tendency to manoeuvre yes. and manipulate. And this is where we get back to the controlling and manipulation. Yeah. And they have a tendency to manoeuvre around what you're saying or not apply it to themselves. And yeah. there's a whole lot of reasons why they do that, yeah. of course, emotionally. But um, yeah, those kind of people, very hard for us to respond. But, and to respond to such a person in writing is impossible actually yeah. because they will read everything you say thinking they already do it <laughs> yes and i just had an interaction today on nikki's forum actually trying to help someone with some truth and they wrote back it was just completely in facade and i sort of felt like i really don't know what more i can say because well we all we, all we can do is encourage nikki to remove them from the forum mm. because at the end of the day if you're in such a facade you're not you're presenting your real self you're not going to learn anything unless you do present yeah. your real self. And, and so, yeah, there's a deep need for us to, to actually show when a person's being unloving. And, and they're being unloving not only to themselves because mm -hmm. they're not recognising their true condition, mm -hmm. but they're being unloving to other people because they're trying to present a condition to somebody that's not real. Yeah. And, and, and it's very confusing. And this yes. is why children are often very confused. Yeah. They see the smile of the person's face, but the feeling they're feeling in, in them is, oh, this person's terrible. <laughs> yeah. And they're seeing the smile, oh, yeah. the terrorist. And this is why the children often, you know, they're often reacting to the, what they're really feeling from the person rather than just the smile on the yeah. face. Mind you, of course, they're often reacting to their parents' yes, reactions feelings. to the person yes. as yeah. well. But uh, yeah, I just find it very interesting how a lot of these people have no idea that the facade is not who they are. No, and and None. really that was a big turning point me in me deconstructing my facade was recognizing, hey, I want to hold on to these beliefs about myself to maintain my own self delusion about where I'm really at yes. and who I really am. Yes. And <coughs> it's all about me trying to maintain control over not only other people but what well, what's in the really end, inside the, me. The only purpose for a facade is to maintain control over your emotions, exactly. which is actually a lack of humility. Exactly. So a person in facade often has just as much a lack of humility as a person who's angry. Yeah, mm. yeah, very true. Mm. Okay, uh, the other people that we don't <laughs> respond to are people who, um, these are people who write to us and they lecture us. They think they're doing us a big favor. Um, uh, they want to correct us mm -hmm. and they often <coughs> use sort of third party material to make a big point with us um, to try and really they really just want to make a point and something that you've touched on earlier. Mm -hmm. They're really uh, trying to force themselves into our life mm. in order to, to basically suppress and correct us. Uh, mm. is, that a, <laughs> is that a good <laughs> yeah, summary? Yeah, no, that's a pretty good summary of, of the kind of people. <laughs> yeah. And yes, of course, like, like honestly, we've, we spend a lot of time in analysing the truths of the universe, mm. much more time than the average person spends because of the way in which we live our life, all through our life. Mm. And so when a person like that emails us and bombards us with all of their thoughts, yeah. we don't do that with other people. That's the we, main this issue, This is the main issue. Yeah. We don't bombard people with our thoughts. What we do is we invite people to listen to our thoughts. Yeah. And the way we invite is by putting something like, that's why we won't use Facebook, because mm -hmm. Facebook bombards people yeah. with other people's thoughts. In the feeds and In the feeds things and that everything. happen. Yeah. So we can't agree with Facebook on it. That's why we don't have a Facebook account and we will never have one. There's plenty of fake Facebook accounts <laughs> in our name out there, yeah. but we do not have one and we will yeah. never have one because it feeds the addiction to bombard people with your stuff. Yeah. And we're not interested in bombarding people with our stuff. We're interested in sharing information that people have to search to find. Yes, that their own seeking for truthful material leads, leads them. them to that location. Yeah. And that's why we, we love YouTube. Like whoever yeah. set up YouTube, we love you. Yeah. We think it's a wonderful <laughs> thing because it's a, it's a way of finding things yes. without bombarding people yeah. with things. Yeah. 
And please don't go down the Facebook <laughs> page. Well, page line. you know they've started to introduce advertising. Of course, and I understand why, because yeah. it's such a big organisation with a large amount of data. But it's not something we would do. No. We don't advertise for that reason. We yeah. don't market. It's yeah. probably market is different to advertise. Advertise is where you you just put something on a notice board somewhere, yes. and people through their own choice discover it. Yeah. Marketing is where you're in the person's face. And you're trying to find avenues to enter into people's environment yeah. and their life in so order to So, for example, to, to give an example, um, having an email account is, is not marketing, but if you send a whole heap of emails unsolicited to other people, now you're marketing. Yes. One is in harmony with love and the other's out exactly. of harmony with love. Uh, with regard to phone calls, having a phone is loving, so people can, uh, can contact, contact you, you or you can contact others, but having a... Uh, you know, a marketing strategy where you ring up people unsolicited yeah. to force things upon them. That's yeah. marketing and it's completely unloving. Yes. It's out of harmony with free will completely. If a person has to tell you no yeah. before they've told you yes. Before you've said yes? No, before they've told you yes. yes. Oh, now, I see what you're saying, sorry. If yep. a person has to tell you no yeah. before that person has told you yes, yeah then you're out of harmony with love. So if I say, would you like a drink of water? And you say, yes. Yes. Then I've enabled your free will choice. Correct. Whereas if I go, here's the water. And I've got to take it. And I've got to say, no, I don't want it. That's unloving. Yes. Right down to that little example. Yes. And people don't realise that, right? People don't realise that if if I'm forcing you Mm -hmm. into saying no, Mm -hmm. then I'm already being out of harmony with God's love. Exactly. So I'm definitely never going to be, not going to be at one with God in that state. No one at one with God in that state is in that state. In fact, everyone at one with God is so sensitive to the will and the true desires within a person's heart. Yeah, you don't even have to say no. no. They don't (laughs) even offer a single thing until they can feel. The yes. The yes. Yes. And and this is a very important, and this is, I suppose, another one of those truths that, that, you know, could be quotable. If you have to say no to a person yeah. before you've said yes to a person before they've said yes to you no no no, no I get it <laughs> sorry <laughs> I, I missed the quote yep. if I have to say no to you before I have said yes to you yeah. it means you have been unloving to me do you understand that I get it <laughs> <laughs> and if you have to say no to me before you've said yes to me yeah. then it means I'm being unloving to you yeah. And you can take it down to sexual interactions to, yeah. like if I've got to say no to you when mm-hmm. you're coming on to me sexually yeah. before I've said yes to you, yeah. then basically you're coming on to me without any any um, respect of my free will. Yes. And that's out of harmony with love. Yeah. And, and these kind of people do that all the time. Yeah. In fact, a lot of the people that we've spoken about in this list. All do that. All do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's why we're not interested in interaction. Yeah. yeah. Because... If I've got to say no to somebody before I can say yes to them, mm-hmm. uh, we're, they're already out of harmony with love and demonstrating their disharmony with love yeah. already. Yeah. And, and, I, and I have very little desire to spend much time with such people. Yeah. Yeah. We want to spend time with people who we can feel from them a desire and we go yes to that desire, yeah. we want, you know, instead of it being forced upon us yeah. as a demand. Yeah. A person who's in a demand is say, you've got to say no to before you say yes to generally. And look, you usually, even if you say no to one demand, you're They'll usually going to have one. to say no to another one and because that injury exists within them. Correct. And so until that, till they, have, they want to deal with that injury. Yeah. They have no understanding or respect for the law of free will. Yeah. None at all. Yeah. That's why, you know, I see certain things on telly where they do one thing and then they do another and then they compare them and they say they're the same thing. And when I look at them, I go, no, they're completely different because one is demanding something from somebody Mm -hmm. and even demanding a no from somebody before you will withdraw. And the other is waiting for the other for the somebody's yes. Yeah. And that's a much better thing to do. So. So, for example, newspaper advertising. Mm hmm is much more in harmony with love mm-hmm. than email marketing yes. or phone marketing because yes. newspaper advertising is waiting that people have to buy the paper yeah. they have to look up the pages yeah. they have to search they have to decide or am i they reading have to that say yes. or not? Yeah. they have to search yeah. it all because they want something yeah, yeah. right yeah. That, that's a much more loving thing yeah. to engage 
than, uh, aside from maybe the trees it cuts down, but you could easily do that on the internet. <laughs> yeah. And, but uh, but well, it's a much more loving... Well, on website, you know. Yeah, it's a much more loving thing to engage than trying to force people into seeing what you're thinking every moment of the day, like Twitter. Yes. Twitter is a, one of the most <laughs> unloving things you could ever set up. Sorry, guys, on Twitter. It's I know you spent wide. a lot of programming time doing it, but honestly, <laughs> it's one of the most unloving things you could have done as long, along with Facebook. And, <laughs> and those kind of, the reason why those kind of places have taken off Massively. is because they feed the addiction of people to be involved in other people's lives. Yes. Forcibly. And to have other people involved in their lives. Forcibly. And, and <laughs> it, it, this, you spoke earlier about the self-absorbed child that yes. is growing up in the world today. Yeah. And a lot of these things reflect that in, they, they're generated through that injury and yes. then they compound that injury, they grow that injury, they make yes. people feel that it's perfectly normal to have these very intrusive, uh, all about me driven kind of, yeah. what do you call them, aspects of our world. Well, it's, I suppose it's a reflection of the narcissism in the world that most people who are even involved with these accounts have no idea that they are themselves being narcissistic. Yes. You know, why else would you want to share that you just wiped your bum today and <laughs> just, just had a coffee just five minutes ago? And, you know, why do you need to share all of this stuff yeah. with people? What, yeah. what, what, what is the need driving you to yeah. do so? Yeah. And, and those kind of people, we find it very difficult to respond to, to be honest, yeah. because we can feel the huge addictive need. And to respond to such a need is out of harmony with love. Yeah. No celestial spirit will respond to that person yeah. ever yeah. until they get out of that. You know, of course, the social person will try to help them see that they're in that condition, mm -hmm. but they can't do it by communicating with them because as soon as you communicate with them, you're responding to the need. Exactly. So you can't, you've yeah. got to do it through some other yeah. avenue. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. a big issue. Big issue. Uh, the final group of people that we don't respond to or refuse to answer yeah. are people who contact us anonymously yes this is another big one. Oh, there's a lot of problems with this there is well firstly they have no desire for open transparency or truth and so, so there we go truth and humility is already both already blocked blocked they're not being loving because they're not identifying themselves yeah. whether we know who they are or not they're still not identifying themselves voluntarily yeah and and so that means that they're being also unloving so they're being unloving they're being untruthful <laughs> and they have no yeah. humility yeah so yeah so all of a sudden there's three Exactly. Things already stopped from it. And, and so anonymous people, and we've encouraged Nikki on the forum to block anonymous people for the mm -hmm. same reasons. Anonymous people are often also quite abusive because they hide in their anonymity yeah. and use their anonymity to attack other people. And this is a, a really sad aspect of, again, the internet age, if I can call it that, I yeah. feel, is that people... And many of the emails that we receive that are very attacking and abusive are from anonymous, anonymous. Mm. And I also know, I know inside of me that if I met that person in the supermarket, there is no way they would say that. Correct. So they hide behind this medium the of the are terrified people. Generally. Yes, they, they lack courage. Yes, 100%. huge lack of courage. And mm. then they are not even willing to stand by with their own identity Correct. what they are saying. Yes. And any, anything that encourages anonymity is really encouraging this kind of person, yeah. this person that lacks courage, that, that lacks yeah. um, bravery, that lacks yeah. um, transparency, openness and honesty. Yeah. They lack love. They're not humble because they don't allow themselves to actually receive anything in return as a real personal being. Yeah. And so, yeah, the, yeah. it's a very, it's it's a very insidious yes. uh, thing that the internet has done by creating the ability to be anonymous while at the same time being destructive. Yeah. And also I feel there's a lot in this about um, exposing soul condition. Yes. There's a movie um, called Blindness. It's yes. got Julianne Moore in it. Yeah. And in it, it just plays with this idea of what happens when everyone, Everybody's blind. everyone gets a virus and everyone goes blind and suddenly people start, all society rule just goes mm. and people start acting in very, very kind of very violent, very addictive. addictive They're all feeding their addictions. Horrible ways. Yes. And um, to me, I feel like 
it, it was playing with this idea of what happens on the internet a lot. Yeah. You know, as soon as a person feels that no one knows who they are, they begin to act in these ways that they don't. They wouldn't normally act. Yes, yeah. and so to me, of course, when that so when those people pass, yeah, they are the kind of people who are very destructive on the earth. Yeah, because they get away with a whole heap of things they want to do, and nobody knows. Who's nobody who on earth can see them very easily, yeah. and or feel them very easily, and so. They don't, nobody on earth realizes all of the things they're doing to them. And these kind of people love that. Yes. They love having the anonymity while at the same time being able to manipulate and control. Yeah. Very, very, very dangerous people. And to me, that's all, that's a, that's reflecting their soul condition. Yeah. It's, it's a very dark condition. Yeah. It's also a very terrified condition. Yeah. And, it, but unfortunately, it's also, it's also a very manipulative and controlling condition generally. Yeah. And these kind of people are often engaged in controlling and manipulating other people. They often believe themselves to be developed, uh, but they don't give anyone the, you know, the opportunity, the opportunity to, to, see to, them. to see them as yeah. they really are. Yeah, 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 that's <laughs> true. And of course, we operate in a way where we're very, very transparent Correct. about who Completely we are, the opposite. about our own soul condition, about our personal finances, about where we live, about what we do, about yeah. all of these things. And so... People who then contact us and demand things from us, at remaining anonymous, they're not entering an ethical exchange. They're not willing well, they're, to... Well, they've already got more from us than they're willing to give us. Exactly. We're, yeah. we're willing to tell them who we are, you know, what our things about our life, how to contact us and all the other things. They're willing to tell us nothing. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, yeah. and, and I find it's actually pointless having interactions with those people, whether you can feel them or not. Yeah. It's, it's really just pointless because... They're already in so engaged in so much conduct that's anti our teachings of divine truth and anti, in fact, social, just the social welfare of humanity mm. that you can't enable their behavior. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, yep. They so. don't get much of a chance either. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a big long list of all the people we refuse to answer. Now, yeah, it's not it's not really a long list. I suppose we've been quite definitive specific, with the list yeah. and specific yeah. about why we don't answer them. But I don't think it's such a long list. No, no. Well, it's probably a long list of people. <laughs> yeah. but, but it doesn't have to be a long list of. Uh, you know, it's not a long list of requirements. It's actually, no. it's actually all of the requirements are based around love, truth, and humility, yeah. which anybody who listens to us would surely expect um, if they understood anything yeah. we had to yeah. say to them. But, uh, but it, it is uh, unfortunately where most people live. Yeah. They live in, that, in those states. And so, you know, that's why I suppose we don't respond to most people. Um, yeah. Can I raise one final thing about that? Sure. Which is um, some people know this about us, right? They know that we don't. Very few. <laughs> We're gone. <laughs> Sometimes I run into people who've sent me an email. Yeah. And or they, or they send me an email and then within a couple of days they send me another email yep. after I haven't responded to the first one. Yeah. Often misjudging and the reason why we haven't responded to the first one though. That's what I want to raise. Then, you know, all of you listening who've just heard this long list and then instead of feeling, <laughs> just try to guess what it is, why it is mysteriously that we haven't responded and then get into, I find then people get into some other addictive states where they try to write to me and own up to emotions that they think that they've felt inside of themselves. Which and has that's got the nothing reason, to do with it. Yeah. Which is sometimes it is literally just that I've been busy for three days and I haven't had a chance Correct. to look at my emails. And if they um, could feel us, they'd know that. They'd know that. <laughs> and if they could feel themselves, I suppose, is, a, is something that... I wanted to point out if they took time in personal reflection of like, oh, hang on, what was driving my email? But even if it's an like, this is what's often sometimes happened. A person sent us an email about a question about God. Yeah. We haven't responded for three days. Remember, we've already said in this discussion that we probably don't respond to almost all emails because we'd <laughs> rather respond to a question about God in detail yes. and do it in a FAQ session yeah. or some kind of interview, yeah. right? So, so we, we'll just grab that question. It's not like we haven't dealt in it with right. it. We grab that question, put it in a list, prioritise it in our list of what we're going to deal with later. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they don't get the response. Yes. And so then they go and start questioning, why haven't they responded? Why haven't they responded? There must be something I did. Now, they'll either be angry mm -hmm. and send us an angry email yeah. or they'll, they'll go all self-reflective about things that are not 
that are not true. Well, it's the operation of the facade, really. Oh, of course. Yeah. They go, maybe it's because they think I'm this, and maybe it's because they think I'm that. And actually, there's a lot of judgment that's coming out of them now towards us, thinking things that we don't even cross, that don't even cross our minds, yeah. actually. Yes. <laughs> we, you know, in the case of many of them, we don't just, we would not have the time to answer your emails. I'm sorry, but yeah. if you think about our priorities, you can understand why. And, and, they're there going, oh, so now I've got to send another email to tell them that I've worked it out why yeah. they didn't email. Yeah. Now, now, now you're in another addiction yeah. right there and then. Yeah. You're in an addiction now. What are you try why are you emailing us about that? If we never responded to the first one, either we haven't had the time to do so or we feel that it fits into the categories we've just yeah. listed. Yeah. One of the two. You need to work it out yeah. for yourself. Yeah. But don't guess that it's something to do uh, judge us based on your guess. ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Judge us based on what we've now told you our priorities are yeah. and then re-look at what you've sent. Yeah. Yeah. And the fact that it's an email is already a problem for us yeah. because it's the slowest, most ineffective form of communication on the planet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> well, probably people living in 1910 would disagree with that. <laughs> no, I feel a written letter is far more effective and therefore less slow yeah. than an email. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right? That's the reality. Right. Aside from no communication at all, email is a slight improvement. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, but, yeah. but it's not a major improvement over a letter, for example. A person who writes a letter mm. generally because they're writing it, they have to give it more consideration and more reflection. Sometimes mm. we receive letters where that has certainly happened, you know. Yeah. Uh, where they have consideration and reflection when they're writing. Yeah. And, um, and quite often we read those letters, yeah. even though we have not responded to them, because again, it's writing. It's priority, so. And writing is slow. Yeah. And it's not the most effective form of communicating to a person. Yeah. And it's open to misinterpretation for, yeah. because of the emotional condition of the individuals who are communicating with each other. Yeah. It's, like, it's like language. Yeah. You know, it's, it's the same kind of problem. We are used to, we've had 2,000 years of interacting with people emotionally. Yeah. Can you understand from that? <laughs> Maybe I should say that <laughs> yes, to the camera. Can you understand from that? <laughs> that, that means that if you're trying to inter interact with us intellectually, there's already a huge problem with our communication because we're receiving your emotions, not what you're saying to us, but what you're feeling. That's what we're receiving. Yeah. And that's what we're going to attempt to respond to if yeah. we're going to respond at all. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what people don't interest you or don't interest us? <laughs> <laughs> um, everybody interests us. Yeah. But we must put a, probably a caveat on that. Yeah. Everybody's true soul condition, personality and nature interests us. Yeah. And what we mean by that is the part of them that God created interests us immensely yeah. because every single person is actually a reflection in some way of God's nature and personality at their core. Yeah. But <laughs> very few people display it. Yeah. Very few people display it. In fact, most people are rather in addictions and other things. And so it's very hard to be interested in those parts of them that the, either their parents or they themselves has, have created. Yeah. So sadly, it's really common for people to have absorbed a bunch of injuries mm -hmm. in their childhood to then act in those injuries, to feel justified in those injuries, to feel there's nothing wrong with those injuries, to become yes. very entrenched in facade and living a life that's very different from and an expression of what they call themselves which is very different from what god created yeah and in those cases when those people want to hold on to unloving attitudes and behaviors and beliefs then we have really not much interest in spending time with them or no but the key factor there is whether they want to hold on to them or not exactly. you know we meet people who don't want to hold on to them and they recognize it is a problem and they do want to change and those people interest us a lot, even if they are displaying a lot of their injuries. Yeah. The people who don't interest us much are the people who have, who have a lot of injuries have, and, and have no desire to change any of them and are not being their true selves at the same time. Yeah. And, and because we're not getting their true nature, the, the true soul, that personality or character that God created, it's very, very hard to interact them, with them when you're interacting as we do with people, which is on an emotional level, yeah. because you're not getting the true emotional person. You're, you're getting instead a, 
a construction or an imaginary person yeah. that is the construction, a, a combination construction of their own parents' injuries imposed upon them and, they, and their own choices that they've then engaged through their life. So yeah, those kind of people are very hard to interact with, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so we don't spend much time and, and don't feel very attracted to interacting with them. Yeah. Mm. And I suppose the second um, point in answering this question is that the people that we are um, interested in spending time with from a teaching perspective are often different from the types of people we might choose to spend our personal kind of social relaxation time with. Yes. And Ob there's reasons for that as well. Obviously, like if you think about it, you know, a seminar is open to all people to come and as long as they're willing to treat us and other people there in a loving manner, they can remain. But that doesn't mean that they're not being in a facade and that doesn't mean that they are not thinking or believing things that are completely out of harmony with love. And so a, a seminar, we meet many, many people whom we wouldn't normally spend a lot of personal time with yeah. because they're not being as real as, they, as the people who we do spend personal time with. Yeah, and sometimes those people, um, while they have s sincere questions and have some sincere sincerity to grow and to know God and things like that, often they have concurrent with that a lot of addictions that they haven't dealt with, a lot of demands, and a lot of some things that you've spoken about in other questions and answers in this series about feeling quite self-involved in their own problems and and without much regard for our personal welfare. Yeah, it's almost sometimes like all I am to people is a library. Yeah. And 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 they kind of come along and pick my brain. Yeah. And and I'm not even really a person. Yeah. And you know, while I'm willing to allow that kind of behaviour to a certain degree because of the condition the person's in, I'm not willing to spend my personal time with such a person when I want to particularly have a pleasurable personal time <laughs> because at the end of the day all I am to them is just a resource I'm and not I'm not even really a human a person and my also the other problem with it is uh, they don't understand that God has all the answers for them and God God is capable of interacting with every one of God's children individually mm -hmm. I'm not yeah and that, that's why I know I'm not God and I know nobody ever will be who's been created by God because because at the end of the day we're not capable of what God's capable of doing. Mm -hmm. God's capable of having an emotional, intelligent emotional interaction with every single one of God's children. I am not yeah. capable of that and never will be, yeah. right, as far as I'm aware. Yeah. You know, obviously who knows what God's got in terms of development in store for us i don't know and, and but uh, but i know right at this moment in time uh, I, I have a very severe limit even though i can communicate to hundreds or thousands of people emotionally at the same time and um, i'm not capable of communicating to every single one of god's children who live on this planet at the same time yeah and and i don't believe that uh, that they, we, we will ever be capable of that at the moment. I don't mm. believe that um, in the future. That belief may change. But I just feel that um, it's important that people understand that, yeah. that, that we are a person like they are. Yeah. We have interests like they are. We have time like they do. We have a limited amount of, of energy like they do. Mm -hmm. And, and to believe that we're omnipotent or something yeah. uh, that God is, is way, you know, it's, besides being totally wrong, it also is a complete misrepresentation of the truth about the human soul because it's not omnipotent. Yeah. It, it's not omnipowerful. It can't, it can't supply energy to everyone. Yeah. And um, only God can do these things. Yeah. And God only does it under certain conditions. And, uh, and I feel there is this expectation in many people that we somehow do that because of, and some of it's their beliefs about what Jesus is mm. or, and some of it's just because they have no, they think everybody should do that. <laughs> <laughs> and some of it's because they think they deserve that yeah. and, uh, and all of those kind of injuries. But, but it's obviously very difficult to interact with such people in a, in a what I would classify as a recreational environment. Yeah because all those people have a tendency of doing is taking more from you. Yeah. You don't replenish your own energy with these people. 
you you finish up feeling exhausted uh, yeah. from these people. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So we're not that interested in spending so our social or personal time with those yes. kinds of people. We are interested in spending uh, our seminar time and mm -hmm. event time with people mm -hmm. in all sorts of conditions yep. because we know that they will need to have some time spent with them before they can change. Yes, exactly. But obviously, if a person has no desire to change, yep. then it's almost impossible for us to spend time with them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I suppose there are some people that we're really not interested in spending teaching time with or people that we don't want to spend teaching time with. And mm. perhaps if we run through... Um, some of those situations. Some of those, yeah. yeah. Yep. And it's very similar to the, the different um, things that we mentioned in the previous question about people that we don't answer. Yes. Yeah. So um, the first uh, group of people or <laughs> lack or quality of those people would be people who just really don't want to love and have no interest in loving. Yes. Yeah. Like... Even in a seminar situation, if they've got no interest in loving, they don't want to love and they don't want to learn about God and they don't want to learn about truth and they don't want to be humble, then my feelings are, well, why are you taking our time yes. here then, you know? Yeah. Like, obviously, yeah. you're only here for an addiction of some kind to be met. Yes. And sometimes people come only to meet the addiction of being able to attack a group of loving people. Yeah, which is sad. Which is it? sad. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, those kind of people, we have little desire to, to spend, teach. even teach. Yeah. Well. well the reality is they're not desiring of teaching yeah, anyway. They're not teachable so yet. They're not teachable yeah. yet, and, but they don't even desire to be, to be taught. So their free will is such that they don't, they're, they're rejecting being taught. Mm -hmm. So a person who's rejecting being taught, we honour their free will and don't teach them. Yeah. We, don't, we don't want to share our time with them because they're rejecting being taught. They don't, they don't yeah. want it. Well, you said, you mentioned there that they're rejecting they don't have any desire to love, they're rejecting God's truth, they're rejecting personal truth, and they have no desire to be humble. And so also they have no desire, they, they have no desire, their desire itself is an expression of their free will to not learn. Yes. And so we have to, if we love them, we have to enable that desire. And honour that desire. Or not so much enable it, but honour it. Yep. The fact is they're choosing to not learn, yep. so we've got to choose to not teach them. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Okay, and beyond that, of course, there's people who are abusive, attacking. Um, yes. And, uh, and, and it's quite obvious why we wouldn't would, want them at a seminar. Yeah. Those kind of people will be removed from our seminars, <laughs> no, in yeah. fact. Because it not just, <coughs> it's not just an issue of um, them not wanting to be taught anything. It's an issue of love of ourselves, and it's also an issue of love of the other people who are present at the teaching yeah. group. It also is an issue that they are actively using their will not to just reject truth, but to ha harm oh, others, yeah. to harm others. Yeah. And we are not going to allow our events to be a forum where you can choose to harm others. And by the way, if you choose to be nice to us, but harm others, the same applies. Absolutely. We are not going to choose to allow you at our events if we notice you harming others while you're being nice to us. Yeah. That's not going to happen either. No. Yeah. <laughs> All right. People uh, in a similar vein, people who are controlling and manipulative and don't want to change that. Yeah, I feel these kind of people are insidious in a way. They use uh, covert techniques mm -hmm. to do exactly the same as the other overt attackers, attackers would do. Yeah. But they're just using covert techniques which allow them to get away with their behaviour without being called on it. Yeah. And we're not interested in, in enabling that kind of behaviour either. No, and I've, I have noticed that there do, sadly, there seem to be people who are attracted to things like seminars or, or spiritual, spiritual pursuits, so-called spiritual, spiritual pursuits. groups or gatherings um, with a facade of desiring to become more spiritual or have a spiritual life or develop themselves mm. who are actually there just because they have some very dark kind of motivations which are to have power over others to control others to manipulate others or to impose their opinion on others yep you know we get a lot of people come along to seminars who just want to say their piece to a group of other people who are yeah. not there to listen to them. No, that's right. <laughs> or even you mentioned in a prior question, 
women who just desperately want attention from men or men who just desperately want att- attention from women and mm. so uh, it they doesn't go along to really a seminar matter. to find some men or women <laughs> women <laughs> who might give them that attention it doesn't even really from a heart soul level matter what's being spoken about no. if they can get that addiction met they're going to hang out in that group yeah and they'll do it in a nightclub or in a seminar exactly <laughs> it's very and in in a way in a nightclub it's more honest <laughs> exactly because most people are there for that purpose. for that exact purpose <laughs> Well, it could be asked. Yeah. Uh, it could be argued with a lot of spiritual seminars that most people are there for that purpose as well. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yes. Uh, okay. Um, people also who were not interested in teaching, uh, or yeah, I think that's a fair statement, are people who are selfish, self-involved, who. Well, again, the reason why we're not interested in teaching is because they're unteachable. Really, you, yeah. you can't teach them anything anyway. Um, and I should say. I qualify that statement. People who are in that state and they have no desire to, to change. change. Because yeah. obviously... There's plenty of people who come to seminars who are in that state, but they desire change. Yes. Even though they might not recognise that that's one of the things they need to change. <laughs> <laughs> they, they know that they want to become a better person or to have a relationship with God. Or Yeah, well, I find the people even who come to our seminars to be a better person don't interest me as much as the people who want to have a relationship with God, to be frank. Yep. Because the people who want a relationship with God are the people who, in the end, will desire to become a better person, whether that's challenging or not. Yeah. Uh, whereas the people who come to the seminars just for some personal improvement, personally improve to a degree, but they're not. Uh, they're ne- never going to be drawn into perfection, yeah. because they because they get to a point where there's certain things they like about themselves, which are out of harmony with love, that they want to keep. And mm. and also, would you agree that those kinds of people? are often more prone to a desire for a facade of being a better person because it's so they see it as something valuable to be perceived as a good or a better person. A lot of it's image driven, yeah. That sometimes they'll reach a point (coughs) where God would really like them to know that there's quite an unloving emotion within them, but they don't want to go there because it threatens their whole concept that they're all about being a better person. Yes, and um, I, so I there's see quite a lot, a lot of people, people run isn't into that, there that yeah. fall into that category sometimes. Yeah. Particularly, it seems to be women. Yes, because women seem to have a very strong. Men seem to have it with their intellectual prowess, and women seem to have it with this concept that many women believe they are better than men because they are already emotional beings. When we actually see them being emotional beings who are very out of harmony with. Emo- uh, loving loving emotions controlling and manipulative with their emotions yes which is very i feel very sad about that sometimes yes that that's how um people begin to view femininity and emotion being humble and emotional is this as being manipulative terrible kind of expression of women being controlling and manipulative with their emotions and i understand why then some men feel very a lot of distaste for that because in well, fact it is distasteful <laughs> yes. but then when they think about being emotional a lot of people then equate this emotional expression with this thing that is very opposite yeah so but i, I see that so-called emotional expression as not emotional expression but but rather it's a facade of emotional mm-hmm. expression it's really um there's a word for it that i that again doesn't come to my mind but <laughs> Um, that's happening a bit today, <laughs> um, but but where they're portraying themselves as being something that they're really not anyway. Yeah. And it is it is it it's, is duplicitous and deceitful. Yeah. And uh, yeah, very hard to enjoy the company of a person who does such a thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and mm. and you know, um, it's not good to aspire to that state either. It seems many women do aspire to that state, while many men aspire to the rigid, rigid intellectual state. Yeah. Um, and both states are out of harmony with what God created us to be. Yeah. Um, it's actually <laughs> the intellectual state needs to be brought to the, the true emotional condition before you, where God really wants you to be. And this, this very controlling, manipulative, facade-based emotional kind of expression Which there's a really, lot of work to do there it's like a it's like a drama queen type yes of, it's yes. like a that kind of emotional expression is very fake and and yeah. not what got what is attractive to god and it's very unloving to the people around yes. that person yes. and there's a lot of work that that person is going to need to do 
on their facade and on their viewpoint of emotion and actually they're quite afraid of their real emotional experience and mm. so these very highly intellectual men and these very controlling manipulative emotional women, women. Uh, mind you i've seen people from other genders on both sides of course, as well of course but they're they're both groups are going to need to do work on themselves on to reach a state of true humility yes. that's going to enable their relationship with god yes yeah yeah and obviously, if they are not willing to do that, then it's hard for us to be attracted to spending time with them, even in a seminar, yeah. but certainly not spending our personal, personal time with them. Time. Yeah. We, we, the people we spend our personal time with are generally the people who have a large desire to, uh, to meet the same goals that we have, yeah. which as we listed in the first part of this session, yeah. you know, in question number one of this session, so if you haven't seen it, my suggestion is to look at it, um, it is quite uh, involved progress from priority God down through different progressions. Yeah. And, um, and, and obviously we, we are very attracted to people who have exactly the same priority list as mm -hmm. ourselves. Yeah, mm -hmm. because at the moment we're talking about just people um, who we like to spend teaching time with and people who we're not interested in spending teaching time with. Mm -hmm. And really the list for the people who we're not interested in spending personal time with is basically the same. same. But there's ones. the addition that even if a person has a really strong desire to be humble and, and doesn't have a lot of these unloving things that they want to hold on to, hmm. if they have completely different personal goals or aspirations yeah, in their like, life... Like, for example, they may be humble at one with God eventually, yeah. um, very passionate about a lot of different things, although I'd suggest by the time you're at one with God, you're passionate about God, God as well. Yeah. But, um, and so it's highly unlikely we'd want to yeah. not spend time. But, but for people who are not yet at one with God, they might be passionate artists or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, and while it's very nice, or passionate musicians or passionate whatever, while it's very nice that we spend a bit of time with them, it's not something we're attracted to do all the time because our primary goals and passions re revolve around God, relationship with God, teaching about God, teaching about God's truths. That, and so it's obviously the people like that that we're going to be attracted to spend more time with so that we can both help them get to, you know, greater uh, uh, grow their condition of love, but also so we can help them um, share the same things we wish to share with others, yeah. with, uh, with other people. Because yes. it's like multiplying yourself. Yeah. Then yeah. You, know, you end yeah. up having a large number of people all sharing this truth. Yeah. In, with their personality still being involved. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's continue down this list of um, people that we don't have a lot of interest in spending teaching time or personal time with. So yeah. Yeah. that's also people who are quite spirit influenced and who have no desire to release that spirit influence or remove themselves from that influence yes quite obvious i feel Absolutely. like you know we're either talking to the spirit or we're talking to the person <laughs> if a person's spirit influence who are you getting yes you're not getting the person you're not getting yeah. the spirit because the person doesn't think the spirit's with them yeah. and you're not getting the spirit because the because the person sorry you're not you're not getting the spirit's true quality because the person doesn't allow that to come through. You know, it's just like, so yeah. it's very hard to help people like and that. And there's a crucial issue of will in there as well, I feel, where Huge the person on earth is wanting to sort of give up their will to the spirit. The spirit in the spirit world doesn't want to have a full expression of their own will. They want to, you know, influence the will of another person. They're using so a person's body on earth. It's so... Um, it's very uh, sleazy... Dishonest. Personal, and, ...interpersonal yeah. relationship going yeah. on between the person yeah. and the spirit. Yeah. Very hard to have any decent kind of true, loving, real interaction with them. Yeah. 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 So while we'd like to help them release themselves from that baggage or from that bondage that they have with the spirit, yeah. if they do not have a desire to do so, which most of them don't, yeah. then... You know, there's little time, little reason to spend time with them. Yeah. 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 Mm. Okay. People who are in addictions, uh, they're very demanding about having their addictions met and they've got no desire to release themselves from those addictions. <laughs> well, that, and that's the key thing. There's, there's people who are spirit influenced, but they have a desire to get out of it. And there's people that are demanding an addiction, but they have a desire to get out with it. We would yeah. definitely want to spend some time with them, even if it's in a teaching role to help them get out of it. Yeah. But, but if they have, have a deep addictions and you talk about it with them and they have no desire to change it, 
now yeah. there's little point in spending time with them. We yeah. can't feed their addiction. We can't enable it yeah. by spending more time with them. Yeah. Uh, we've just got to let them be because yeah. they are exercising their will to not address the issue. Yeah. So you just got to let them be. Yeah. You can't. We don't. We don't withdraw from them to punish them. We just. We no. just. We can't spend time with you because you're not being real. You're being in an addiction. We we don't want the addiction. We don't want to feed the addiction, and we want the real person, and we're not getting it. So what do we? What else do we do? Yeah. The only thing we can do is go and spend more time with people who are real and don't yeah. want their addictions. And we should probably say that about all these different groups and these different injuries that we're talking about, and all these people. Mm. Like you and I don't have this feeling of like judgment and all no. bad people and we're not good it, it really feels almost a little bit um light to me now just like no i can't i can't go there even though you really want me to i can't go there with you because it's not just about yeah. looking after myself and my time it's also that i just can't help you with that it's thing also that about doing. loving them exactly like you can't sit there and engage the addiction with them and love them no you, you and and they want you just being there they want the addiction met so what do you do you've got to withdraw yeah. you're not trying to punish them or anything but you've no. got to withdraw in an act of love to them because yeah. they they just think they can sit there and get their addiction met all the time and you can't do it yeah if you really love people, you can't do that. No celestial spirit would ever do it. God certainly does not do it. And so any person who's aspiring to, to get to be at one with God can't do it either. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. All right. Um, people who are condescending, belittling, ridiculing, and can't see that that's what they're like and they don't <laughs> want to change it. And yeah, well, the we, same applies. We talked about this in the previous question Same as well. applies. Yeah. There's not... You know, all of these people fit into the same category, really, is yeah. not only are they in the state they're in, which is one thing, because yeah. everybody's got their injuries. Yeah. You know, the way the world is today, there's a lot of injuries Ev on the planet. Everybody's on the planet. got their injuries. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah. What the problem is, is if you don't want to change them. Yeah. That's the problem. If you don't want to change them, then we don't believe there's any time, any point in spending much time with you yeah. if you don't want to change them. If you want to change them, we'll spend a lot of time with you. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But we might not spend like our recreational time with you because yeah. it, it can be exhausting yeah. trying to help people who are in those injuries. Mm -hmm. But we at least will spend some time teaching with you because we because we feel there's a valid reason to help you change if you wanted to change. So we're very responsive to a person's true exercise of their will, their passion. Yeah. If their passion and will is in the direction of wanting to, mm -hmm. then we can feel that. Now, there's a big difference between them believing it's in that direction and actually it is being in that yeah. direction. Yeah. There's a big difference between those two states too. And that probably leads us to the next group of people, which is people who are very addicted to their facade. They mm. refuse to interact with us in anything but facade. They refuse to even acknowledge that they're in facade, even though their actions and their emotions are showing us that they have completely different feelings to what they're presenting. It's just... it's. It seems, you know, we talked about this again in the previous question. Yeah. This is, what do you do? You just, yeah. I want the real person. Like God wants the real person. You're not being your real person mm -hmm. and you don't even want to know that you're not and you don't even want to change. Yeah. All we can do is honour your will and yeah. say, fair enough, you don't want to change, but I want the real person. I'm not getting it. So uh, as I said to one lady, we were driving home. She was sitting next to me, talking to me. And I said, I don't want to hear you. I don't want to even listen to you. You're not being real with me. Like, I'd rather be silent and so I can talk to God. Right? And from that moment on, she never spoke to me again, actually, <laughs> even though we spent the next two days together. And um, she was staying, you know, there. And, mm -hmm. and we spent, a few, you know, she wasn't, it's not a sexual relationship or anything. I just said, no, I don't want this unreal person that you're presenting to me. Yeah. I want the real person, the person who feels what she feels, not the person who makes out she feels it. Yeah. Right? And uh, most people can't, who are in facade can't even grasp that because they believe their facade is better than what God created. Well, that's exactly Sad, why it's there, isn't it? Yeah. It's there specifically because at some point in childhood or adulthood, they chose to deny person, their person, they've self. decided this is a better version of me. Yes than what God created or the hurt that happened to me and the, yes. the childhood feelings Both. I have towards myself. Yeah. Both of those things, I don't want them anymore. I'm going to be this 
person Being plastic and person. I'm getting like, I'm getting from them, no, I can feel all this stuff coming from you. You're not voicing any of it. Yeah. What's the point of interacting with you? Yeah. You don't want to voice any of it. I don't want to interact. My choice is that I don't want to interact with a person who's not being truthful with me. Yeah. I don't want to do it. Yeah. And I'm allowed to choose that. Yeah. So if we're driving in the same car, I'm allowed to not say a thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's right. and Just like it's she's not allowed about... to be her facade <laughs> self. <laughs> it's really not about arrogance or judgment or rejection. It's no. just a desire to interact really. And then if a person doesn't want to, that's cool. Yeah. We're not like invested I'm not in forcing having... them to be with me. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, most of the time, these kind of people are forcing themselves to... on me. <laughs> oh, <yes. laughs> anyway. All right. Um, the last two groups of people is people who come to our seminars who want to make their own point, who want to lecture us, who basically want to teach us a thing or two. Yeah. Um, basically, that's yeah. not the purpose of Go and have your own seminar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I often think. Like, uh, And I don't mean that in a nasty way. I think, look, if you've got that much conviction... It's very unloving to the other people at the seminar. The yeah. other people at the seminar are there to listen to somebody's teaching a certain thing. Yeah. If you're just there on your own soapbox, yeah. then you're being very unloving to every single person there, yeah. e including the person who's arranged the seminar, yeah. done it all on their own money, yeah. their own time, yeah. their own effort, yeah. their own resources and everything. Yeah. You're being very, very unloving to them. Yeah. Very unloving to them. And you know, I had this example, it's probably a couple of years ago now, where someone wrote to me and they were in a workplace and they were sent to some kind of training course yeah. that was sort of somehow... They said it something was something they didn't agree with. It's something they didn't agree with that was posed in some kind of them. self development or yeah. forced upon growth. them by the by the job that they were in. Yeah. Yep. But then they said, look, I felt I needed to stand up for truth. Yeah. And I couldn't agree with anything the presenter said and I just had to keep correcting them. What an obnoxious person. <laughs> that was done because of divine truth and I needed to do it. What a lot of and, rubbish. If you yeah. if you understood love, you would never have done it. Exactly. You'd never be able to do it. And if you'd received any of God's love, you could never even consider no. doing it. And if you even felt anything about the respect of will and gifts and any of these loving principles, there is no way you would do that. No, if you, you really felt that you could not handle it, which would be an issue in itself. Correct. You would get up you're and there for work. Exactly. And you're actually getting paid to handle it. And as far as I <laughs> understood, there was no kind of preaching of anything evil doing. It was no. just more sort of perhaps some new age principles about, you know, positive thinking and things like that. Just natural uh, love principles. Natural really. love principles, which, you know, that's love. Mm. <laughs> of a kind. Of a kind. Yeah. Um, but if you're really struggling, that the thing you could do is get up and leave the room but even that but wouldn't be very loving no like you've got a question why you can't sit there being paid to listen to a person that you don't agree with exactly. without saying anything exactly. that's a lack of humility you know if you know that they're wrong there's no need for you to voice the opinion like unless they're asking for it yeah. if they ask for it then voice the opinion and there's a lot of times when we're in kind of uh, company or in out in the like in town or maybe we're in a social situation where views are being expressed that we do not agree with but unless we're asked directly there's no we have abs we do nothing to mm. enforce our no, beliefs on others it's because their free will that they believe those things exactly and and if you're sitting in a seminar that somebody else has created mm -hmm. trying to force something down their throat yeah. then you're out of harmony with love before you begin yeah so, so and and that really includes the people who maybe say nothing but sit at the back of the room and project it all and project it. emotionally it's the same it's thing it's exactly the same yeah we've yeah. had many of those yeah. and nowadays i remove them yeah it's just like yep yeah, you don't even want to be here you're just here to attack me please leave yeah. so i can get on with talking to this group of people who are here because they want to know something yeah <laughs> exactly. You know, exactly. and that miser might not have said anything. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. The final, the final group, if you like, of people or category of people that we talked about in terms of people we wouldn't respond to. Yep. Um, emails and questions. Yep. Um, now we're talking about uh, teaching and who we're not interested in. But yep. that was about anonymity. And I'm leaving that in for this one because there's a lot of ways that people try to sort of 
like for example we video all of our seminars yes and a lot of people believe that that they are entitled to say well you can't video me i want to be here yeah but bearing in mind that everything on our website says that if you come along to our seminars you will be videoed and if you don't want to be video don't come and to, watch the video yeah watch the video instead don't yeah. come to our seminar yeah. it's going to be videoed anyway don't come to our seminar if you don't want to be video yeah. and yeah. also it's an, again an issue of transparency openness yeah. and truthfulness yeah. if you don't want to know other people to know that you were there yeah. then my suggestion is you probably shouldn't be there <laughs> yes exactly if you <laughs> if you're that afraid if you're that afraid that, you know want to be duplicitous in your life about what you do yeah then then why would you be why there? would you be there and if you are there then obviously you need to confront this issue yeah. you need to have more courage and confront the issue it's it's a part of your learning about god yeah. really in the end yeah. and so yeah i feel people who request of us to remove them out of the cut and clip uh, rem- which clip is them a out huge issue actually it would take oh, so it's, much time it's to impossible or to do it because how do you know. get rid of that person who's in that yeah. corner of that even if you're just panning and they happen to be in the shots it's and the other thing that i notice which sort of relates to anonymity inside of my head anyway um is people who contact us either by email or maybe they're in a seminar and they do this kind of really uh what i find is they quite talk about in the third person oh <laughs> no, no. Yeah, there's that as well yeah. but it's sort of underhanded thing where they're trying to test you or I. Yeah, oh, it's, and like, it's abusive. Yeah, they want to, you know, say, if you don't know what I'm thinking right now, then that means A, B and C are in. That means that you're not Jesus yeah. is the biggest one. Yeah. yeah. You, if you were Jesus, you should know. Yeah, it's like I, I have to a, be B, God. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Basically, uh, that's what they believe anyway, yes. that Jesus is God. And so if someone's claiming to be Jesus, he has to have all the qualities of God. Yeah. And yeah. what a ludicrous concept. Yeah. Yeah. Like if Jesus is a human, then then of course he hasn't got any of the qualities of God except those qualities which he's asked for from God, and God's been willing to give him. And he's been humble <laughs> enough to receive, exactly. and desirous enough to receive. Exactly. So, yeah. So yeah. So I find those people are really in quite. Uh, they're very unethical as well because they mm. don't want to share anything about, about themselves, themselves, and they're really expecting so much, especially from you. Yeah, when um, we get those kind of emails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the, the delete button there. yeah oh you know yeah i've had people approach me at seminars and say look what can you tell me about my biggest issue and and i say oh look what do you believe your biggest <laughs> issue is <laughs> well even if i share what is quite blaringly obvious then they say well that's not enough you know i need more yeah and and that kind of thing is really it's really about um testing and treating us like resource and yeah and, so and it's very unkind behavior yeah, yeah. bearing in mind that all our seminars free and we just gave them usually four hours of our time for nothing and mm-hmm. um, then they come up and have a request and then when we don't accede to their request they then criticize us yeah that's a very unloving yeah. behavior that they need to correct yeah and if they wish to continue coming to our seminars they might find themselves being removed from their <laughs> seminars if they continue that behavior but yeah you know this is obviously Part of teaching people about love is acting upon what is loving. And this is something a lot of people don't get, I feel, is that we, one way we teach you about love is not by what we say, Mm -hmm. but rather by how we treat you. Mm -hmm. And how we treat you is going to have very, like if you're finding you've got very little time to spend with us, how we're treating you, and and if you assume that how we're treating you is loving, then maybe we have reasons for doing, treating you that way. That you need to examine yeah and and my and when i say treat you that way it's not like we're attacking anybody or condescending to anybody or disapproving of anybody we're just not going to allow your bad behavior yeah and so you know obviously how we treat you has a is a very interesting way for you to work work out because if you think about it for many of you we treat you the same way god treats you yeah god doesn't hear you either or doesn't respond to what he hears. Yeah. God doesn't feed your addictions. God yeah. doesn't give you approval when God feels you need to have a cry. Yeah. And all those kind of things. God God is very clear of how God treats other people. Mm. And the closer you get to God, the more you'll be like God. Mm. And yet you look on the planet, the average person criticizes God and complains about how God treats them. Yeah. Uh, in the end, don't you think the average person, once you become at one with God, is going to criticize you and complain about you, about how you treat them? Yeah. Because they do it with God. And if you're at one with God, surely they're going to do it with you. Yeah.
So people, I don't think, are very logical about that. Yeah. They often believe that a God would treat them in one way, you know, like, you know, <clears throat> I re always remember a seminar, it was just a little seminar I went to in somebody's house, and uh, there were about 10 or 12 people there, and this lady said to me, yeah, you're definitely not Jesus, because I went to this guru, she quoted this guru's name, and I know what this guru does. He projects sexually at women in order to give women a sense of sexual proof, worth, a sexual and, worth yeah. and approval. And all the women just fool over backwards for him, right, as a result. And so he, she then quotes his name and says, you don't do that. I don't feel any love coming from you. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, that's so interesting. Hey, yeah. I actually love you by not sexually projecting at you. Yeah. And you don't see it as love because you have the addiction that yeah. any man who sexually projects at you is love yeah. and therefore more connected with God. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. And that's how distorted people are sometimes yeah. is they have no you know, idea really what's going on with them or why they feel a certain way about people. Yeah. And the majority of times it's because their addictions are not getting fed you know, yes. and yes. When, nowadays when people think whenever you're feeding an addiction, they think, oh, you're a wonderful person. He's <laughs> such a loving person, <laughs> such a kind person. And, everything. and then as soon as you stop feeding their addiction, oh, he's such a bastard of a person, <laughs> you know, like he's a terrible person. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I find it quite interesting. And this is the reason why most people have a tendency to think God is a, ba is a bastard. Yeah. Because God's not feeding their addictive, addictive emotions yeah. and yet you know they don't think that maybe god has the better opinion of love than they do yeah yeah <laughs> i know it's i it's interesting isn't it because everyone on earth we're all coming from this injured state of love that's mm. why we are not you know perfectly loving and especially we're very injured when it comes to an understanding of what it means to love from God's perspective, the yeah. absolute truth of what is love. Yeah. And so it's kind of a strange, it, if we could all lighten up about it, we'd learn a lot more quickly and just sort of go, oh, yeah, I've, maybe I don't really get what this is about or maybe. Well, like we say in our assistance groups, education in love on the planet, there's hardly any at all. Like lacking, yeah. You know, I just had an email a few weeks ago from a man. I think he said he's got one of the only courses of love in a university that's ever been done in, in the US. Yeah. And I go, oh, well, that's probably right. You know, like yeah. at the end of the day, I, I've never seen a course in love, no. <laughs> you know, that, that actually teaches true love. No. Um, and, and this is why, where God is trying to teach humanity true love and most of humanity is just feeding on addictions. So of course, yeah. most of humanity has no interaction with God. And if the more you or I become like God, the more mm. we become at one with God, that once we become exactly at one with God, then most people will have the same opinion of us as they have of God, unfortunately. Yeah. But, you know, that's a, and that's sad, but yeah. the reality is most people on the planet do want their addictions met. They do want to have this addictive, projection so that they can feel good rather than working through their issues in a real way. Yeah, I sincerely hope that us growing and hopefully inspiring other people to grow towards being at one with God and so many mm. in, in areas of their life, I hope that that is going to help people to recognise that this process of moving from addiction to actually becoming more sensitive to what is truthfully loving mm. um, can be such a rewarding process because speaking from experience when you're in addiction those so-called good feelings you're getting that honestly honestly they're just so yucky yeah. compared to what it feels what like real when love you, feels like yeah when you're really in a really loving exchange when you receive love when you mm. receive some of god's love and um i know that it feels sort of shaky for everyone a lot out there you know um but i really hope that um even though I'm, I'm well aware that people are probably going, a lot of people are probably going to start to have similar feelings towards us as they have towards God, and a lot of times that's not necessarily nice. I sort of have the feeling that in the long term, <laughs> I hope that people come to sort of... I think that's hope, more of a hope than a reality. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> the, the reality is that any person who's in an addiction is going to be challenged by a person who loves. Yeah. 
Because the person in addiction, by definition, wants their addiction met. Exactly. So, so the reality is that it's going to be very difficult for a person who's in addiction to recognise love. Yes. And that's always going to be the case. Yeah. And it's only when the person starts to work through their addictions will they begin to yeah. recognise love. Yeah. And I feel yeah. that that's the key thing. And there just is the desire for people to start to challenge addictions. If they can grow that desire, then well, it's so rewarding. Well, you, you think about your own growth. Like, you could barely recognise love when I met you, I feel. Barely. And... I, and now no. you're starting to recognise love more, but what have you had to do to get to that condition? You've had to address addictions. Yeah. That's the only way you've come to recognise love. And my yeah. facade. And facade and addictions kind of support each other. And I've kind well, of facade is all about growing, addiction. You, yeah, they're sort of yeah. intertwined. Absolutely. And I do understand, having been through that in recent times, you know, in recent years, that yeah, you don't just go, oh, I'm in addiction. Oh, now suddenly I realise what love is. Like You have to go through an emotional process of desiring to let go of the addiction, feeling the error within yourself, and that become has made me more sensitive. Yeah, it's interesting you say all that because I feel by definition that's what the path is. It's you're saying things that I feel the path is. Everything yeah. is emotional. You have to get rid of your addictions emotionally before you'll recognise love. That will definitely occur. Yes. Like when you emotionally release your addiction, you will emotionally be able to recognise love. Yes. But you can't, like you say, do it intellectually. And you but, can't do it without some pain. Yeah, but yeah. by definition, the path is a path of emotion. Yeah. So, so, like, you know, I feel sometimes we talk about the intellectual side of things, but... The reality is, if we have to talk about something intellectually, we're not on the path. <laughs> the yeah. path is emotional. <laughs> the path is going through an emotional experience. Yes. So, so the reality is, unless a person wants to emotionally release the addiction, mm -hmm. they will not recognise love. And you've had to emotionally recognise and feel and experience the addictions. And yeah. it's only after then that you've started to feel even love enter you from external sources. And and I suppose what I was trying to say is it's only after that process that I've begun to appreciate true sources of love. Uh, yes, to, because, to because feel that, them it's as only after that that you have the ability to feel love coming into your soul. Before then, all you're interested in feeling is the addictive emotion coming into your soul. It's like a compulsion. Yeah. Yeah. And so, so unless the, poor per, the reason for the addiction, the cause of the addiction is released emotionally, yep. you will always demand the addiction be met. Yep. And this is what I'm saying, is that a person who becomes at one with God no longer feeds the addiction. So every single time that person talks with a person who is in addiction, the person in addiction will feel dissatisfied through the discussion. Yes. Not satisfied. Yeah. <laughs> Does that make sense? Yeah. Even though the person who loves is loving. Yeah. So, so, and this is what we've got to, this is why we're not attracted to, to d doing, you know, events with people who are in addiction because at the end of the day, if they desire to remain in it, yeah. they're basically only wanting the emotion they want from the person, mm -hmm. in, in our case from ourselves, mm -hmm. rather than wanting to be loved. Yeah. So, and they obviously have the same thing going on with God. Yes. Otherwise, they wouldn't do it with other people. Yes. So, you know, we, you know this is going to be a problem for, for them. But I, I feel you've got to be very careful about raising issues from an intellectual perspective. Yeah, though. I, look, I don't know Cause I feel where sometimes I was you headed still then. Do I think that. I kind of, yeah. Yeah, you still raise an issue intellectually where you go, where you sort of say, Oh, but pe people don't realise that if they don't re recognise this intellectually and go through this process, then this is what's going to have to happen. I feel it's very simple. We re emotionally release the blockage. Yes. Once that's gone, you can emotionally recognise love. Yes. Before that time, you can't. Exactly. And you are not going to feel good about the loving treatment because you want the unloving treatment. You want the unloving yeah. treatment. You believe yeah. that unloving treatment is love. Yes. That's what the addiction demands. Yeah. The addiction demands that you believe the unloving treatment is love. Yeah. So a person, for example, just wants every man to project sexually at her. Yeah. Like, 
He's got to be unloving to himself and unloving to you to do it. Yes. And yet you want it. Yeah. That's that's what love does. That's what this sorry addiction, addiction. does. Yeah. Love. What would love do? Love. If the guy loved you, he would never project at you sexually, even if he found you attractive. <laughs> yeah. So even if he felt emotionally, he would not feel an attraction towards you. Yes. Because he knows that you've got the addiction, and he cannot satisfy the addiction. Mm -hmm. So. So getting back to the example I gave where this woman said that I wasn't loving yes. <laughs> <laughs> because I didn't feed her sexual addictions, yeah. um, she can't recognise love. She's got no idea about it. That's why she thinks that guru who's just a sexual projector and a sexual manipulator and actually mm. a sexual deviant actually yeah. who manipulates women through sexual projection, mm -hmm. um, that's why she thinks he's loving and connected with God. Yeah. And, and which was the broader point that you were making, which is why so many people feel estranged and have a bad opinion, estranged from God and have a bad opinion of God. Correct. Because they're viewing addictive um, emotional exchanges as love. Yeah, well, this lady, this lady um, connected her feelings from this man, which was sexual in nature, yeah. as if God would feel those things for her. Yeah. Now, how sleazy would that be? that God, instead of feeling like, instead of you feeling sexual stuff only with your soulmate, God made you so to have all this sexual stuff coming from God. Yeah. No, God hasn't made you that no. way, but it is a new age belief. It is. And the reason why is because there's so many spirits projecting sexually at new age practitioners yeah. that they then think that they're connected with God through the sexual experience. Yes. And it's ludicrous besides being completely false. Yeah. The, all they're getting is a whole heap of uh, sexual addictions met through spirits. And, and a person who loves you would not do that. Yeah. A person who loves you knows that the only sexual experience that you would have if you were in your true state would be with your other half, your yeah. soulmate. Yeah. And that would be the only sexual experience. Yeah. Yeah. And they wouldn't want to interfere with that in any way. Mm. And that includes God. God doesn't want to interfere with your relationship, sexual relationship with your soulmate. Yeah. God does not supply sexual energy to you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's very And clear. I just feel that, you know, oftentimes people in addiction want certain types of energy, whether it be sexual or approval or glory or attention or, yep. or you know, be the centre of attention of everybody. Or even or to feel superior because to they've feel superior. found yeah. So they like people who feel inferior yeah. around them so that they can feel superior and so forth. Yeah. Yeah. That's not what God's like. No. And also, if you become at one with God, that's not what you'll be like either. And it's certainly people who want those kind of emotions, well, they are just less and less attracted even to our teaching because more and more that we both progress less and less and less and less of that kind of emotional exchange comes out, of us. Comes out. yeah so of yeah. course they're not going to be satisfied yeah so eventually they'll find an excuse to leave <laughs> <laughs> send and, us a breakup letter yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you and i will just sort of be sitting here in our studio just <laughs> making videos that not many people watch <laughs> 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 no, I'm, I'm kidding. I feel, I, as I started saying, I feel more hopeful that, that there is some aspiration in some people to challenge Well, this is the thing. There, is, there are sincere people. Yeah. And there are sincere people who do want to have a relationship with God and who do want to challenge their addictions and who do want to let go of their facade. And the reality is we are seeking those people. Yeah. And in fact, the material we teach will only find those people. Yeah. The other people will ignore it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter how much somebody advertises or markets it or anything, it's still only going to find those people in the long run. Yeah. And that's the kind of people we're seeking. Yeah. Mm. Well, thanks so much for this session, babe. Yeah, no worries. <laughs>